Good morning and welcome to worship with St. John's United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today I have the pleasure to announce the ability that St. John's has developed to invite people to in-person worship throughout the holiday season. We will be preparing private worship services for families and individuals that would like to have an in-person worship, but we will be maintaining safe distances and masks so that no matter what level of security and health we need to be observing for the sake of our community, we will still fit all the regulations and be able to worship in our holiday spirits. So please give me a call if you are interested in making a reservation. There are many opportunities, different times for everyone, so no matter what day of the week or what time of the day works for you, you should be able to find one that will fit for you and your family. Let us take time now to center our hearts and minds for today's worship as we join in our choral introit Praise and thanksgiving. Let us bring to God our many prayers. Gracious and wondrous God, we thank you for this time of the week where we might set it aside specifically to bring you our praise and our worship, our worries and our woes, our thanksgiving and our celebration. Good and glorious God, May you recognize all those burdens we carry with us today and give us the strength to lay them at your feet so that you might work within them your will and encourage us onward into your kingdom building work in this world. Gracious God, we thank you for the many gifts that we see around us each day. We recognize the blessings you have poured upon our lives and ask that you encourage us to pass them forward. May we be a blessing as you have been a blessing. And may all of our good deeds point to you. For every prayer, both spoken and left unspoken, we lift them to you as your Son teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join now in a hymn, Ask Me What Great Things I Know.
as we gather each week, we take time to remind ourselves and each other what truly brings us to this space. So let us take time now to share in our statement of faith, and today we will read the UCC Statement of Faith doxology version. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God. And to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before them the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through the prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared a common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us the Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, an eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. the burdens that we give up in prayer, the celebrations that we carry to encourage us in prayer. And our prayer of faith and our UCC statement of faith, let us now sing a song that reminds us what we do when we've done all these other faith practices. Join me in our hymn, We Are Called.
I invite you now to turn in your Bibles to our scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Today we'll be reading out of the NRSV version. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves, Know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are doing. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of these scriptures and use them in the building of our faith. Amen. When I hear people talking about finding the exact day and time that the Lord and second coming will happen, I am always curious about that insistence on knowing the time and place. Think about this, because when you go to put something in your calendar, when you're keeping in mind a time and place, why are you doing it? There's a number of reasons we do it. We do it because maybe we're going on a trip and we want to be packed and ready by that day. Or we're getting prepared for something and we want to be able to say the right thing or have our surroundings set, or make sure we're well rested. We have this idea of being prepared, but also having time to make those preparations. If you put something in the calendar for two years from now, you're not going to pack your bags tonight. So why in the world are we so insistent on having a date for this coming of the kingdom of God? And yet, in the early church, this was something so heavy on the hearts and minds of the early Christians and Christ followers that sometimes they get distracted beyond everything and think if we just knew the perfect time, then we could be prepared. And over and over, Christ and the epistle writers continue to remind them, you should already be prepared. This isn't a practice where you set the date and you have time to prep your bags or secure your house or make that perfect speech. Those should already be ready and waiting. No procrastination is necessary when you are expecting to leave any day. Preparation should be something that is always being done, not being set aside because, oh, we have time. When it comes to preparation in my own household, we have two different schools of thought. I have a interest in planning for end of life. Being a pastor, I have seen how those kinds of plans can be a great gift to your loved ones, 
and how important it is and helpful it is even to those in the time of passing and that time in between to know that when I go, my loved ones will be taken care of and my desires and hopes will be met. I believe that end-of-life planning is so important, no matter how old you are or what's happening in your life, thinking about that occasionally is a practice that is not only a sign of love, but it's also a sign of faith in my mind. To recognize that this world is not our end journey or even our end goal and to look at the possibilities we have in this moment that is finite and how it can be carried on. For me, it is not a fearful thing to recognize the fact that one day I will indeed be done with this body. Now, for my beloved spouse, on the other hand, when I start to talk about end-of-life planning, most often the response I get is, well, I figure Jesus will come back before then. In which case, my response is always, as much as I love you and value you, I highly doubt that God's second coming is built around your body clock. Mike has this beautiful hope in salvation where we will all be swept up on the day of second coming and we won't have to worry about these earthly things. Which is a way to be prepared. And I come about it saying I've seen others who've gone before us and it doesn't have to be scary or painful can be a process of faith, a celebration of a life well lived, relationships built, and the hope for heaven. No matter how you go about preparing yourself and recognizing that each day might very well be the day you meet God face to face, May you meet that with hope and love and faithfulness. May we all recognize that our days are numbered. And God has a plan for your soul. May we celebrate God's presence in our lives and the way that we continue to show presence of God for others. The Thessalonians want a day, a specific time and way that these times and seasons will come. But if you are prepared in your heart and soul, it doesn't matter whether it is in the next hour or in the next millennium or in the next eternity. It will surprise us if we're not prepared, no matter what. So let us take time every day to prepare our hearts and minds so that we might be built up and strengthened in our faith, encouraged in our love, and not take our moments for granted. Let us build one another up. Encourage one another in faith and grow the love of God in all we do. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we recognize that God gives many gifts, we also recognize that there are those who are lacking. During this time of global pandemic, we know that some communities have been hit especially hard and are 
American Indians are one of those populations. The United Church of Christ has a special offering called Neighbors in Need, and when you give to Neighbors in Need, one-third of that offering goes specifically to a ministry that the UCC has built and stays connected with that specifically builds and encourages Native Indian, American Indian communities. Let us bring our gifts so that we might encourage communities outside of our own and also our church. Let us celebrate this gift giving together. God, we thank you for your great generosity that is poured upon our lives. For the love and hope you encourage and plant within us. We thank you, God, for the ability that we have to give gifts of time, treasure, and talent, and we ask that you bless that which we give today, so that it might become seeds within your world, that will grow into great branches of your community and kingdom. Wondrous Lord, through your miracle and your presence, we know that even the smallest gifts can move mountains. May that blessing reign true in the gifts given today. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in a hymn called, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. <laughs>